Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Private Practice Startup Podcast. This is your superhero, Katie Lemieux, hanging oh out with- Oh my gosh, you guys. It's so hard for me to take her <laughs> seriously while we're starting this podcast right now. Because it's Halloween and I got my superhero cape it's on. Halloween. She has a mask that's like a kid's cut out mask of, I don't even know what type of material this it's is. It's like felt. It's, yeah, it's like a felt mask. It's really funny to- like actually take me seriously as you're starting the, the show with your with your superhero cape and your mask on um i'm dr kate campbell the co-host here co super co superhero yes. yeah but really you guys are the superheroes right yes. therapists are superheroes so that's we why are we're all gonna... superheroes that's right and that's <laughs> Amy Lassiter piping piping in um so she is this she's not she's our guest but she's not our guest we're going to be the guests of the show today okay. so a super spooky halloween um episode flip in the script, flip in the script. Yeah, we're going to be on the other side of the podcast yeah so this is a fun thing so we are going to talk about how to choose an amazing business partner so really cool amy had approached us and said i would love to interview you guys on your podcast and we said that's a cool idea what are we going to talk about and so that is what we're going to talk about. But before we do all that, um, we hoped you joined us last podcast um, where we talked to Dr. Keely Combs. Um, they talked to us about avoiding ethical mishaps on social media. So we took a deep dive into social media policies, um, how that all kind of came about, really looking at what we need to do to protect our clients, protect ourselves. So you want to make sure you join us um, for that one or had joined us. And if you hadn't, Go join us there. Uh, but anyways, so also we want to invite you. Usually we say, you know, welcome. If you're a brand new listener, awesome. But we're going to say welcome anyways. And we're uh, rolling out our super, I don't, I don't even know, like a, I can't even come off an analogy off the top of my head about like, I usually say rolling out the red carpet, I don't, yep. like flying out my cape. I don't, I don't know guys, but we're just excited and happy that you're here. Um, usually we give you guys our A to Z cheat sheet, but we want to give you something else this time. Um, so go over to privatepracticestartup.com, head over to the resources tab, and guess what? We all need paperwork for our practice. We want to give you um, our attorney-approved customizable HIPAA form for free, um, and you can actually grab a $5 release of information. So total value, I think it's like $59. So head over to the resources tab, um, and you'll see the HIPAA there, and you can grab both of those just for five bucks. What a, what a steal. Um, so also, before we do get started, we want to just take a moment for our awesome sponsor. Yes, today's sponsor for our spectacular <laughs> episode, I don't even think I've ever said that word before, is Gusto. If you're in private practice, you most likely wear tons of hats and capes and, capes. and masks <laughs> and all of that good stuff. And some of those hats are totally great, but some like filing taxes and running payroll, for example, wah, wah, not so great. <laughs> That's where Gusto comes in. Gusto makes payroll, taxes, and HR actually really easy for small businesses. It's a fast and simple payroll processing, um, doing your benefits, and they also have expert HR support all in one place. Gusto, Gusto automatically pays and files your federal, state, and local taxes so you don't have to worry about it and scramble at the end of the year trying to get all of that done. Plus, they make it easy for you to add on your health benefits and even 401ks for your team. Let them wear one of your many hats, and you have many better things to do in private practice. Listeners who take advantage of this opportunity will get three months free when they run their first payroll. So try a demo and see for yourself at gusto.com backslash PPS, as in private practice startup. That's gusto.com backslash PP. So actually, if you guys want to just go to the, sh uh, the show notes for this particular episode, you'll be able to see that link and you guys will be able to get that uh, right away. Yeah. So make it super easy. That's just the best way yes. to do it. Today is Halloween, which is always a Which is day. my favorite out of it's the whole year. I feel like honestly it's been Halloween for a week. I've been celebrating Halloween <laughs> for the past week, dressing up with my son. He's three and a half. We've had all these little block parties and trunk retreats and tonight we're going to go trick-or-treating and you know this is a great little costume so I might just have to wear it tonight if you guys you have see to wear the mask today, you probably would laugh we're, we're at Katie's house doing a full work day working on our marketing e-course for private practitioners and so we're actually podcasting from the guest bedroom we've got a light on us we've got all these wires coming out from everywhere we've got it's surgery it's it looks like we're set up for surgery it's quite the situation over here <laughs> 
<laughs> Anyways, we are so excited to be seeing Amy again. It's been, gosh, how long has it been since we had you last on our podcast? Probably about a year or a year, so. Maybe I think it was over a year ago. Yeah. yeah. Great yeah. to see you again. It's awesome to be here. And I so appreciate you guys giving me the chance. Like, I realized it was kind of odd to get an email and be like, hey, um, so can I talk to you on your podcast about... <laughs> partnerships and all of that good stuff. So I totally love the fact that you guys are like, oh my gosh, bring it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's so fun to do different things. So we appreciate it. Really that. Is. It really is. It is fun. Yeah, honestly, this is a really important topic and something very unique. And owning a business by yourself is a lot of work. It really is. And sometimes yeah. having a business partnership is a really smart business decision. It definitely was for us. Um, we call each other BP as in business partner. That's our endearing way to refer to each other. Although sometimes when we do the speak to text, it comes out baby. Oh yeah. Many times they've said, hey, yeah. hey baby. Hey baby. <laughs> hey baby. Hey. Yeah. Hey baby. Hey baby. But she knows what I mean when, when, when that happens. So right. um, this is going to be totally off the cuff, off the cuff, off the cuff. Cuss. Yes. <laughs> However you say it that. It can be both. Totally spontaneous. Um, I have no idea what questions Amy's going to ask us. So let's get started. Let's just turn it over. Amy, it's your yeah. show. Go. <laughs> Everybody, like, no. Okay, so here's one of the things that I am curious about. And I, how did you two even meet? How did the private practice start come to fruition? Well, we met in licensure supervision back in 2006. We were in supervision together. Um, along that two-year journey, and then we went on for double AMFT approved supervision together. So that was a four-year process of getting supervision together, and our supervisor at the time twisted our arm. She didn't have to twist too hard, uh, and wanted us to become president and vice president to resurrect the Broward Association for Marriage and Family Therapy because it was really six feet under. And we realized through that three-year uh, volunteer experience which was uh, we poured our heart and soul into that um, resurrecting experience of the chapter and really got it to be thriving we realized how well we worked together as a team and I had gone to a particular training here the Florida qualified supervisor training one weekend and the training was the most boring 16 hours ever and I was like oh my gosh Katie we've got it we've got to help other clinicians with this we've got to teach this training um, okay, and, and that's something that we basically, that became our flagship training. We started off with that together and we started doing that a couple times, um, across the state a year and we still do it today and we still do it today. And we it's realized at that fun. time, Hey, this is a business. This is a, you know, like a side hustle that we're doing. That's not a part of either one of our practices. So it probably makes sense for us to get incorporated. And then in the beginning of our work together, we were focused more generalized on, mental health professionals and helping them with various aspects of trainings like licensure renewal, which we still offer and the supervision course. But our real passion was to be able to work with private practitioners. And we realized through our own experiences of having six figure plus private practices and then coaching other private practitioners. We were both doing that um, and really attracting people who are wanting to know, how did you guys build such successful private practices? We realize that clinicians really struggle the most with creating, with, with branding themselves and then marketing their private practice. So that's really become our niche and um, the area that we focus the most in because and, that's- And we're passionate about. Yeah. And, and that's what I was <laughs> Which say. is what we teach. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, that's definitely following our passion and then meeting the need of private practitioners because that's the area that they struggle the most in. They go to school to become great clinicians. But unfortunately, schools don't teach them the business, entrepreneurial, sales, marketing schools, the skills that they really need to know. The so long story short, that's, that's how we met. How we met and how we got into business together. That's awesome. Um, I think it's really interesting because marketing is such a hard piece. And I, you know, when I talk to other therapists, they're like, I don't know how to do like how to market and how to do this. I was like, you know how to connect with people, right? Because you do that all day long. I was like, exactly. that's what it is. Like you exactly. already know. We, we um, talk so about taking those skills outside the four walls, right? Like, so therapists yeah. have really great skills, but it's just transferring those skills in a different area. But we forget all yeah. about that. Like when we walk outside, you know, it's so true. It's like, you want me to say what you want me to, th what right. <laughs> I totally get that. I love it. Um, so you guys have known each other for a really long time um, and have worked together, it sounds like, in numerous capacities and in numerous different ways. And 
through that time period, you grow a lot, you learn a lot. And so what do you think, when you all decided to, you know, go into partnership, make, you know, incorporate the business, what did you realize about yourself that you didn't realize prior to the incorporating of the business and really making it a true business and that you guys were true business partners? Hmm. What did we realize about ourselves well, that you didn't know before? The first thing that comes to my mind is that, I mean, I already knew that I was a hard worker and that you were a hard worker because we, we had experienced we, that together. We've experienced that together. Um, I don't think I realized how much like doing, we just jump right in and do things and we'll just like tackle tasks and not really pick our heads up to really look at the bigger vision. And I mean, each, sure. that even came up today. It did. You're like, let's start working. I'm like, no, <laughs> let's pull back. <laughs> let's, let's look at the big picture. So we, let's look at the that's system. definitely something that we have We've to stay. That. Well, we, and we still have to still very attuned to. Yeah. yeah. Because we'll, we'll jump more highly, highly motivated. We're hard workers. We're really driven and we can get so passionate about the content we're creating and, and like the lower level hanging fruit that we forget to like pick our heads up and look at the, the bigger picture of things and ensure that we're really staying on track. And also we tend to take on too much, too many opportunities. Um, we have a hard time saying no sometimes. Well, I guess that's the, it's, the a, it's a, it's a definite version. evolution. Right. Um, but I think we continue to modify and tweak that. Like we just had a conversation yeah. yesterday and you know, it's interesting. Like when we talk about business, like the things that we learn and continue to learn is really just like that streamlining. Like I even said to Kate yesterday, we're, we're talking about uh, our, our paperwork and we're doing a black Friday sale. Right. And I'm like, why did we do this? Why don't we just do what works where we already have the system in place? And you said something and I said, well, Frito-Lay is not making cookies. Like Frito-Lay just keeps making chips. That's all we keep making. Right. So it's this constant evolution, stepping into things, looking at things. So it, it's a constant journey. Um, I also think that one of the things that we also realize is that, you know, and this is also, again, we practice what we preach in the sense of what are your natural talents? Um, initially Kate was taking over the financials just cause that's what happened. She doesn't really, numbers aren't her thing. So I do, I do the financials and I love it. You know what I mean? So, um, really looking at your natural talents and really highlighting each of your natural talents is so important in a partnership. Um, and I don't, I don't think this was something like we realized, but our communication is just so, you know, when, when I just need to keep Kate in the loop or she needs to keep me, well, BCC on the email, just so the information is there. Um, I don't think there's rarely ever a time where we don't know what's going on. Um, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, the communication, we work really well together as a team, which is mm -hmm. awesome because honestly, a business partner is a marriage, right? So we're married. <laughs> totally. We are married and we legally too. <laughs> yes. And we communicate really well, which is great. Um, that's definitely a strength of ours. And we we both have different strengths that we bring to the table and, and it complements really well, which is nice because I can't imagine having this whole business and that all being on my shoulders, it would feel so overwhelming. It's so nice to be able to have somebody else to be in the trenches with you and really sharing that that passion and that journey and, and the workload as well totally mm -hmm. yeah. so if you so sometimes how i describe it and i heard it a little bit when you were talking about you know you get so focused on another project that you forget to like pull up and look at the whole big vision and the um how do you how do you point that out to each other when the other one is doing it or is it like hey you're doing that thing again <laughs> Yeah, we, we take feedback from each other like really well. And I, and I think for me, and I don't know how you feel, but I think because we, we didn't start this off as a friendship, it was more like, you know, two professionals coming together. So it stayed very professional and we've developed a friendship over time. Um, but when we, when we get into it, sometimes it's like we're already in it. Like, I think the other thing too is like when we commit to something, we both commit to it. And yeah. if along the road, we're like, damn, why do we do this? We're like, okay, this is another learning lesson. And it, it's just like a realization. We say it, it is what it is. And then we, we remind ourselves, you know? So, um, I think that's, that's how I kind of take mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. We, it, yeah. It's always open to give each other feedback and kind of like check in and, and we do have to catch ourselves and catch each other because we can, 
be so excited about an opportunity and so excited about collaborating and partnering with people where we're like, yes, let's move forward with that. It's so exciting. We'd love to be able to do that. And we're like, wait a minute, but we're trying to launch our e-course in the fall. Right. And now it's like nearing the end of the fall and it's going to be, you know, so we, we have to kind of like take that, that, take that step back and really look at what is on our plates and what's realistic. Right. Like even, even phone calls and people reaching out and wanting to connect. It's like, not, I, not right now. Like you just have to keep reminding yourself. So right. And each other. Yeah. I mean, and it sounds like it takes a lot of patience too. And you guys were saying earlier too, that you play to each other's strengths and how did that happen when it came to the division of the labor of, you know, the business and have you, is there a time when you've had to address an issue where it's like, it was working for me when we first started, it is no longer working for me now. How do we want to address this? That's a really good question. We kind of have naturally just evolved into these different roles and responsibilities and we're very collaborative and, you know, Katie, um, numbers aren't my thing. So Katie does more of the finances and then we're both involved in a lot of facets of the business. Um, I really um, fell into a lot of the tech work because I'm, I'm good at that and I can do it. However, it's not necessarily my passion. So tech is one of those things that over time we've, as, as we've, you know, the first phase of building a business is more like the bootstrapping phase. So you're, you know, you're pulling up your bootstraps, you're getting in there, you're, you're kind of like hustling and getting through um, a lot of the initial building and growing. And now that we're in this place where we can outsource um, I'm not building another website. Uh, we've outsourced that for our, you e guys can all hold her accountable for that. Just totally. saying, so, she said that we've before. Got, yep, we've got an awesome, now you all know awesome <laughs> building our platform e -course and coaching hybrid that we're offering. And she's taking on all of that tech, tech work and, um, it's really nice to be able to have those types of things off, off of our plates. And, and I think I remember when we like completely systemize and outsource our whole podcast system, oh, except doing the podcast, like Kate was getting to this point where like, there was a lot of resistance. You were like pinched and squeezed so much. You're like, I just can't, I'm so burnt out. And it was like, okay, we got to do something like this is not working. Um, and now we've completely systemized that system, mm -hmm. another system and a few others. And it's just like, it's, we joke about it. Like, I, I love systems, right? Like it's just when you systemize something and it works almost like effortlessly, we joke around because like we, even today before we hit record, right, Amy, we're saying like, oh, we forgot we even had to host the show. I forgot it's our podcast, but it's like, it's so systemized. It's like, we just show up and it's like, oh damn, we have two things to do. What are those things? Who's our sponsor for today? Who's our sponsor? What's going on? Uh, yeah. yeah. Like the last one scrambled. That's the amazing aspect of having something so systemized though. And that's, that's, that's another aspect of like how we've kind of pivoted and, and changed and evolved over time because that, you know, the podcast tech, that was something that I figured out and, um, you know, I was really passionate about us doing this podcast and I was like, I'll figure it out. I'll take it on and I'll do all of that. And we have our whole podcast system is like 35 plus steps. I mean, it is a massive system and that was taking like hours and hours and hours every week to stay on top of. So once we outsource that, we don't even have to like know really what's going on. It's just taken care of and poof, magically we just get to appear, appear here with our mask and cape and hang out with you and have fun. So it's really yeah. cool. it's reignited the passion. Yeah. And I think I love that you guys are talking about systems because I think they're so critical to businesses um, because you are making, so I think I saw a stat somewhere once where it was like an entrepreneur makes an average of 25,000 decisions a day, like a day, whereas the average person makes 15. And that can lead to a lot of decision fatigue and just exhaustion and burnout. So when we're talking about systems and things like that, how do you all decide like, okay, we've got a system, you know, we have to put a system behind this. We need a system, you know, this, and how do you all prioritize what systems need to come first? And is there ever conflict for the two of you when it comes to that? Good question. So one of the, I just want to kind of like back up and say one of the beauties of having a partnership, I feel like Kate and I have the opportunity to actually, um, like learn more in less time. And what I mean by that is like, she just listened to a podcast this morning and she just gave me the cliff notes of it. I just finished reading a book this week and I'm like, here's, 
23 things that I thought was cool and here's three things that's really important. So the, our, our ability to move faster and learn faster um, is better with a partnership. And so when we look at systems, um, one, I think we look at when we, when we learn, right? So one of the things about entrepreneur and businessship is you know, when we look at, I don't know if anyone's seen the founder, but that was all about Ray Kroc and McDonald's, right? And so when you can systemize and outsource things that an expert or professional doesn't have to do, that's what you need to be doing. And a lot of the stuff anyways um, is systemizable, right? So well, we can't systemize, we can't, we can't systemize doing the therapy, right? Like a therapist actually has to do that, but really everything else around our practices, we can probably systemize, right? So when we look at, um, a lot of the tech stuff, the podcast, we systemize our webinar system. Um, Jessica, our marketing extraordinaire, she does all the marketing and we kind of coach her in certain aspects, but that's just really overall hands off for us. Our whole um, affiliate system. Our whole is, affiliate system. And that was massive. That was massive. So it's, it's, my, my mind works a little bit more systemically. Like Kate gets the overall picture, but there's some places she'll get mm -hmm. stuck and she'll be like, I need, like, I need you to look at this yeah. aspect and I can like Details. look at like, okay, if this, then this, if this, then this. Um, so what we do in the systemization, um, like I said, it's a lot of tech stuff. It's a lot of stuff that can be done by someone else and or through video or technology leverage. Um, so leveraging technology to do the work, that's a really important thing. Um, and then we just walk through it until it's perfect. And then we, we send it to someone, a lay person, and ask them to walk through the system. Um, and then we tweak it if need be. Um, and that's kind of how we choose systems, um, what to systemize. Um, but a lot of the stuff in the creation phase, like with the marketing e-course right now, it's all on us mm -hmm. um, until we get it down and, and systemize it. Did I answer your question? I feel like I gave you a long winded one. No, I think it's, I think it's a really, I think you answered it perfectly. It's, um, you know, they're just really critical to the business and, you know, when we talk about, you know, systems and trying to put all of that into place, I think it can get really challenging. And I think it's great. You know, that's kind of the beauty of a partnership is that you can ideally play off each other's strengths. Because if you have somebody who's like, oh, I can do X, Y, Z, like that makes total sense to me. Whereas somebody else is like, yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think that's really great. Um, when... You know, you mentioned earlier that, and I also want to say I absolutely agree with you, that a business partnership is really like a marriage. And one of the things that we all know, especially with uh, marriage and family background, financials are a big challenge for a lot of marriages, how to handle the finances, all of that stuff. How did you all approach finances when you first started and I know that the roles have shifted some, mm -hmm. but how did you, how did you start that conversation? I, my first answer is a smart one. Like, Oh, we weren't making that much money. So that was easy. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah we weren't we were making much doing money. Trainings a couple of times a year. And it was like the side hustle, just this, this training company. And then, um, as we started to grow and evolve then, and we also read profit first, mm -hmm. And um, so good. we've been following the profit first system, which has been amazing. And I am dyslexic. I am not like a numbers, numbers person. Um, I like to outsource that whenever possible. And Katie loves to be involved in all the numbers and the finance. So it works really well for our business marriage. Well, that and in your actual own marriage, you, that's how you guys, your husband same, does the finances. The so maybe in, in my marriage, he's yeah. really so great. Maybe she was primed for it. <laughs> yep. So it's, it's worked really well in, in, our marriage and my marriage with Brent, <laughs> with him managing the finances, and I'm still involved. But um, and then I I outsource it at my at my um, private practice as well. So yeah, that was right. that was never. It's funny, yeah, when you say like a lot of marriages have financial, like you know, it never was. And and this is the thing that I think you know, in education and learning, when we talk about not only systems in our business, but when we look at what other systems are successful for people and what are they doing that works, um, and being an entrepreneur and being open to that and being like, okay, this is a system that works. It's not emotional, right? It's like, right. okay, well, let's try this out. Does it work for us? Okay, great, it works for us. Let's keep doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's that's easy. And I it's interesting because Kate and I will like, like, you know, we're human. Um, so there's days and Kate has stuff going on in her life or I have stuff going on in my life and we might not be our best selves. And so sometimes we'll just check in and be like, uh, I felt like I was being really bitchy today. So if that came across, like, I'm really sorry. And usually it's like, no, I didn't even notice, or I'm sorry you're feeling that way, but thanks for checking in. Um, 
so that's, you know, a lot of our decisions are very like, like clear and not emotional. Um, we get more emotional when we say yes to things and we're like, why do we do this? Um, like we did it to ourselves again, we are again. getting mm -hmm. overwhelmed. Um, but yeah, we did yeah. have one situation though that happened, gosh, maybe a year and a half ago. This was like <laughs> the biggest, I guess, conflict, the point of Kate conflict. thought I was divorcing her. Yes. I basically like had an internal freak out and like, took me, I don't know, months to recover from that <laughs> because oh, I thought she man. Was to jump ship on me. I've right? had to pay for her EMDR. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole separate budget for that. Let's just see. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we're out to lunch one day and we're reflecting on like our vision and our direction of where we're going. And I had been talking about wanting to do this e-course, um, for, for years. And we were, we were trying to be more like generalist in private practice like the whole, mm -hmm. the whole shebang of like from startup to mastery, which is part of our tagline, but it's just too much. And then, um, we, we were realizing at lunch, like we're spreading ourselves too thin. We've got to shift. What are clinicians struggling the most with? And then and I came on really strong. <laughs> yep. And in that conversation, Kate came on like super strong, very strong. And, um, I left that meeting with like a ton of anxiety and freaking out like, Oh my gosh, she's, she's going to totally bail. She's going to jump ship. Um, and I had a hard time kind of trusting that you were going to be uh, like committed oh, for a while. That. Yeah. Look at Amy, you're making us do therapy. Co so couples so. counseling for kind of my thing. <laughs> sharing this with the world, you know, whoever's listening. Um, but so much so that I had a date night with my husband that weekend. We're sitting at Valentino's in Fort Lauderdale at our favorite restaurant. And we're up at the chef's table, like the bar, where basically it's like you and you're sitting in the kitchen and they're all cooking in front of you and like oh, watching. Cool. Nice. Amazing. So we're drinking this amazing bottle of wine, having this like really romantic dinner. We've got a sitter watching Landon. It's like date night, right? Which we love to do. That's like a ritual for us. Mm -hmm. And I start talking about like what had happened and I was filled with so much anxiety that I just literally started like crying in the restaurant. Oh, at the chef's I table. didn't know this. <laughs> Yeah, because I was just filled with anxiety, like, oh man, we've invested so much in this business partnership, we've, we've like come so far and it's growing and, and we're like about to really like take off on this direction and then I feel like, oh my gosh, she's going to jump ship on me. So yeah, that was a long answer Aww. and kind of like a vulnerable thing to share because I haven't even told her. No, now I know. Yeah, but now she knows. So I had like a total freak out and it took me a while to recover from that Aww. and be like, okay, she did it. She's committed. We're good. We've regrouped. We've like found our niche and, and that, that thing that really ignites us, um, as people and as professionals who are helping clinicians. And then it's what they struggle with the most. So now that we've, we've, we're staying focused on that, the marketing e-course, helping therapists brand themselves, market the dream practices and the paperwork, those two things are our two products and services that we're helping clinicians with. And other than that, we're like trying to keep our blinders up and like stay laser focused. I feel like the wind things. catches the blinder every once in a while. Like, Oh, what's up there? <laughs> yes. So that, that one situation though is like the main challenge. However, it was an opportunity for us to pivot. And although it was very difficult and there was a lot of anxiety and a lot of like uncomfortable, um, moments, we were able to pivot and really pivot in such a good way that it's been like so, so transformational on a lot of levels. And we've really just taken off since then. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that? No, that, that was well said. I'll, it, <laughs> I'll let you have the spotlight on that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, my freak out moment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I think that brings up like a really good point because there is a lot of anxiety. There's, a, you know, especially in therapists and helpers and healers. I've seen this popping up a lot and that maybe for you all too on some level because it's, you know, we're helping and serving helpers and heal stuff with all of that. And we're still kind of moving that through. So what tools do you feel like Amy, are, Amy, yeah. Amy, uh, okay. Hold on. For we, some, we the, lost the connection for that whole response. Mm -hmm. So, so we're I would just, gonna just take a quick five second break. We'll clap. And if you can just act like you hadn't said anything and just, you know, after what we said, if you can start with what you were saying again, we'll wait five sure. seconds, we'll clap, and then um, have you start again. Restart. It was just so bad we couldn't hear like a single word. 
<laughs> okay. All right. So we'll, okay. Five so seconds. Wait. So I think it's interesting when uh, we're talking about business ownership and that we're also helpers and healers by trade and we're still human beings and we're dealing with our stuff on top of business stuff on top of serving clients. So what do you all think when your emotional stuff does come up in business and just because humaning is hard, are there certain tools that you feel like you lean on more than others? Because this is one of the things that I see pop up a lot, especially in my office and when I'm working with other clinicians is people don't seem to understand how to heal yourself and how to move through your own stuff while helping others and moving a business forward. Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> what a great Halloween time for you then, right? <laughs> um, actually, this year has been, I think you, you took the bulk of most of the year stuff going on. And I just, I, I grabbed a big piece of it recently. I had yeah. some family crisis stuff going on. Um, so I think the beauty of, it, we, Kate, Kate and I always talk about isomorphism, right? And so like two things happening in the same context simultaneously. And I think the beauty of what we teach and what we help therapists do, and we talk about lifestyle, business, dream lifestyle, uh, we apply that to ourselves. Um, so when we look at, you know, and there's a clear communication between Kate and I, like this is what's happening, this is what's going on. Um, and also the way that we process and do things, we just communicate about that. Like I had an emergency pop up in my life like two weeks ago and I just, Kate was on her way to my house for a meeting and I had gotten this call and I was just like, hey, I need like, can you come at 11, family crisis. <clears throat> and then she waited or whatever and I was like, uh, just FYI, I don't want to talk about it when you get here, not ready. And we just respect that, right? And then later on it comes out. Um, so there's a high level of respect, but a high level of support and checking in. And like, even when I was away this weekend with my family, Kate was checking in on me and like, are you okay? How's it going? Um, so there's very much that, um, but it's a lot in communication. And, you know, there's times where, you know, life kind of takes a hold and one of us has had to step back. Um, but we don't, it, you know, I think sometimes in a marriage that might not be going well, there feels like there's more tit for tat. Like, well, I did the dishes that, you know, tonight mm -hmm. and you should cook tomorrow. Like it's never been that way because we're just so dedicated and hardworking and that we almost like feel bad. You know, it's kind of like, let me try to pull my weight or do something more. And we just know that it ebbs and flows. We're both very committed to it. So it's yeah. not even a question. And with our couples therapy, we're both couples therapists, right? So we talk about like when you have a culture of appreciation and like fondness, then there is that freedom and flexibility and that give and take and you give your partner the benefit of the doubt. It's very isomorphic and that is something that's very present for us in our relationship. I know um, I'm always sharing, you know, how, off, how much I appreciate you and how I'm grateful for everything that you're doing and just like, thank you, thank you, thank you, just to let you know. And, and you know, that keeps us in this place because we are contributing and really pulling our weight. And there are some times where life happens and emergencies happen and loss happens and, um, or health issues. And we've definitely dealt with a fair share. It's been really hard this past year dealing with a lot of that on a personal level. Um, I know for me personally, it's been like one of the hardest years of my life. And so I've been dealing with a lot of, um, on a lot of levels, working through some things and a lot. yeah, Metal. seeing therapists, hypnotherapists, <laughs> um, lots of medical stuff going on and losses and yeah, it's been difficult. And I, you know, could not imagine having any other business partner. Katie's been so incredibly supportive and it's not like I haven't been present during those times, but there are, have been times where, you know, I haven't been able to for short windows and she's just like, I got it. I got it. Do your thing. Take care of you, you know? And, um, and that's, what's so amazing about having a business partnership when life happens to have somebody that's really got your back and in this with you. And, um, because we both pull our weight and we have, so much appreciation and gratitude that's present. We just have this beautiful marriage, honestly. It is. And I, I'll say, and I think I've shared this with you before, but maybe not enough, but that's one thing like I've learned from Kate, like he talks about her love language is, you know, words of affirmation. And I would, I would realize like how affirming she was constantly. And I was like, I need to beef up on this <laughs> because I'm, I'm a straight shooter. I'm just like very direct. Sometimes it comes across harsh and I've had to learn in business to take a step back, connect first. Um, for anyone who does the disc profile, I'm a high B, like, boom, like, let's just get it done. Let's just cut the crap. Like, what do you need? Okay, great. So I've had it really shift and change. Um, so there is a lot of like praise affirmation. Sometimes there's even like random surprise gifts, like, yeah, very much yes. like a marriage. Yeah, totally. Yep. <laughs> so I, yeah, I got a surprise. Um, what do you, what do you think is the best gift? 
The best gift? Yes, hmm? What's the best gift? Like what we gave each other? What's the best gift that you guys have given each other or that you've received from the other? Oh, that's a good question. I, 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 to me, it's a committed business partnership and like, Aww. like being able to watch what we've created and how it's grown. I think that's cool. Yeah. Being um, able to reap the rewards of that. That's definitely cool. Yeah. yeah. And I, I know, Amy, you had a, like the question about like how Kate, you kind of answer, like, how do you take care of yourself? Um, so for me, uh, reading, meditating and working out is like, part of my habitual habits. Um, so that's really important taking time off. Um, I've been traveling a lot mm -hmm. this last month. Um, that's not always, it's nice to see the world, but it's not, uh, that's not the way I decompress. So, um, taking time, doing fun things, assuring mm -hmm. that I'm taking care of myself. So that's mm -hmm. kind of reaching out for coaching, mentoring and support when I need it. Um, yeah, the self-care piece is important because keep in mind, this is, this is just one of our businesses. We both have two businesses and, um, I've got a group practice. We're actually doing this office expansion. Now we've got a group of 15 clinicians that work with us. I've got a three and a half year old and a husband and it's like a lot of balls in the air. So being able to have some boundaries and enjoy the weekend, spend time with my family, um, Pilates a couple times a week. And I, I'm like a foodie and wine lover. So anytime I can go out and get like a date night in or um, drink some good wine and enjoy the whole food and wine experience together, that's always like something that I really enjoy. So, um, and then of course I've been doing my own personal work this year too, which has been really important. Yeah. So I feel like we could talk to you for like hours about <laughs> this stuff. And, um, Tell me more. <laughs> I'm just looking at the time and we, yeah, probably should for a bit. start to wrap it up a bit. Yeah. Um, and you know, of course, you know, I always, I'm like, Oh God, on the universe and it's timing. Uh, because really the last question that I really wanted to ask is, is there one piece of advice that you would give someone else who wants to start a partnership or a joint venture? What would that one piece of advice be? Okay. So I would say really, think hard and um, ensure that you're picking someone that has the qualities and attributes that you're going to mesh well with. It's just like a relationship. You kind of want to date that person a little bit, get to know them, really understand what makes them tick. Are you guys sharing the same vision and having the same goals and um, ensuring that you have that foundation there first before jumping into the marriage of partnership, not just like off the bat jumping in and then creating a prenup really with like a business if we were to dissolve this business marriage what's gonna to happen to the business how are we gonna handle the finances um, can one partner buy the other person out if they want to carry on so really creating that prenup and dating your business partner before you end up in a married relationship with them yeah and that's that's kind of like what I was gonna say when Kate and I first decided to form an LLC I reached out I have a very legal mind, so I reached out to a colleague who's a family law attorney, a friend, really. Um, and she, like I said, what's the best advice? And she goes, you need to talk about how you're going to dissolve the business now. And I said, that's, like, awesome. Like, mm -hmm. that makes total sense. And we talked about it. Like, okay, well, what, like Kate said, what would that look like? Who gets what? Ba, ba, ba. What if I want to get out? How does that look? And then creating the operating agreement. Um, because, you know, I don't. I think sometimes like when we do talk about marriage as people like avoid the prenup conversation or what would happen if we get divorced because they don't want to put that out there. Um, right. But the truth is, is when we talk about those things and those taboo topics, um, we already, we already have the plan. Like, and it's not that it's going to make it happen, but we're both clear. And um, I think, I, I mean, I've never had a business partner that I've been friends with first, but I think for me, like us being more of a professional, professional relationship and developing a friendship over time, um, that was really helpful because I don't know, there was like more clear boundaries um, mm -hmm. for me. So I think that that was really helpful as well. I, I wish I had like a better like guidebook of like, do this, do that, do this, <laughs> but that, that's from our experience. Well, now you guys have an idea for your next e-course. <laughs> How do you build in a couple of years? In a couple of years. <laughs> no, I just um, I think that's great, and I really love that you guys are honest about the conversation. And you know, what does the prenup look like? And if we were to dissolve, what would that look like? Because in truth, yes, that can cause a lot of anxiety. It can cause a lot of anxiety because there's not a clear foundation or what is going to happen. And a lot of people think that's what's going to happen when what I really hear happened for you guys is it actually created a lot of security because everybody knows exactly what's going to happen. 
And when you're not feeling that anxiety, it allows you to rest and relax and trust a little bit more because you already know what happens. So I love it. I think it's great. Awesome. Well, Amy, we so appreciated you reaching out to us and um, suggesting this because this was a ton of fun. And like Kate said, we've actually wanted to talk about this for a while. So we're so glad that you said, what about this topic? So we thank you for that. And Startup Nation, we thank you for listening um, in on this. And we hope like it was also enjoyable for you because I know we don't, we share stories, but it's not usually the, we're not usually the focus. So yeah. hopefully you learned a little bit more about us. Um, and also if you are starting a business partnership, some things that you could do look for, or if you're in one already, like how do you go about that and navigate that? So we hope you join us next week. This is a really important topic, um, especially for those of you who are still grappling with your six figure bleh, student loans. Uh, how do you get rid of those things? So Travis Hornsby is going to join us next week for that. So you want to make sure you check that out. Um, and as always, we love that when you show us the love. So whether you send us a Google review or post something on iTunes, um, honestly, you know, Kate shared with me just today, a video testimonial from one of our coaching clients, Dr. Sean Davis, um, like legit guys, I got chills. Like I know what we do is helpful, but to really hear it from you guys, like, it's just like, wow. So yeah. we love for you to show us the love. So however you want to do that, um, just let us know what you're up to and, um, how we're inspiring you and the community as well. Don't forget to hang out with us on Facebook at the private practice startup.com. Nope. That, that would be a website. Look for the private practice startup. That would be the Facebook group. Um, so we, we will look for you guys to join us next week. Yep. See you later, Startup Nation. We'll see you next time, Startup Nation. Thanks so much, Amy. It was great seeing you again. Thanks.